Starship SN8 completed its final static fire and is ready to soar to 50,000 feet. A couple SpaceX missions lifted off this week, so we'll debrief those. Starlink questions get answered, and my gift ideas for the holidays is today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Well, it's been quite the wait, a long time coming. The Starship serial number 8's 15-click flight is upon us. Since its third static fire that took place a couple weeks ago, the pad that was damaged after ignition has been repaired. And on Tuesday, a fourth and final static fire using its replacement Raptor engine was executed. And so Elon took to Twitter to share the good news. Good fire, aiming for first 15 kilometer altitude flight next week. Goals are to test three engine ascent, body flaps, transition drawing propellant from the main tanks, which will only be slightly filled, to header tanks and landing flip. Odds of survival, 33.3 repeating percent. I'm coming up with 32.33 uh, repeating, of course, percentage of survival. At the uploading of this video, it appears Monday could be the big day for this, but just guard your hearts, okay? If weather doesn't delay it, there are a number of things that could, even up until the point of ignition. Keep in mind, it's not only a rocket, it's an experimental rocket. The FAA still hasn't released a notice to airmen yet on their website either. So whenever it actually does lift off, in the meantime, you can enjoy the hype and notion of looking forward to something truly awesome. Local news, KRGV published an article after their conversations with emergency personnel. According to a local boating law administrator, SpaceX will decide a go-no-go -go based on vessels inside the safety zone per FAA regulations. The U.S. Coast Guard noted in an email that there is a self-destruct area in place up to 9.9 .9 nautical miles offshore of the Brazos-Santiago Southern Jetty tip. And interestingly enough, that SpaceX is planning for twice-a-month launches moving forward, says a Parks and Wildlife officer. Personally, I very much appreciate the daytime launch of this mission, which should provide us with the best viewing possible. And of course, SpaceX will be streaming live on their YouTube channel. If you're new to the community, trust me, you don't want to miss this. Come flight or failure, it's definitely going to be the show of the year. If it does fail, rest assured that tons will be learned from it. That's how rocket science typically works, after all. Especially if you play too much Kerbal. <laughs> and SpaceX already has subsequent Starships on standby for the slaughter stand. SN9 just received its upper half and is now fully stacked. Many small improvements have been made between 9 and 10, but overall they're similar. Wiring is more robust, engines are more mature, nose cone is sealed better, etc. However, major upgrades are slated for 15. Parts for that ship are on site, have been flipped, and are about ready for stacking. But back to the FAA for a moment. They are beginning a new environmental survey of the Boca Chica site, now that SpaceX is really making great strides in their efforts to launch vehicles much larger than their Falcon 9s, which was their original intention for the site when the original survey was conducted in 2014. While it was determined that Starship fell under the scope of the EIS as it currently stands, a new one must be implemented in order for SpaceX to test Starship's super heavy booster. So the clock is ticking, government. Elon has massive support on his side, and not just in the local community, and not just the country, but the entire world. He has proven himself a juggernaut in his efforts to get to Mars as quickly as possible, and his first super booster, BN-1, is already under construction. An unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Moving on, we have two SpaceX launches to debrief this week, which by the way is very cool if you think about it. It wasn't too long ago that we would consider ourselves lucky just to see one launch a month. First on Saturday, Sentinel-6 lifted off from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, the first West Coast launch in more than a year, carrying and successfully deploying an ocean observation satellite for NASA and ESA. The new Falcon 9 booster that carried it landed at the launch site, providing us an always appealing view of the event. The fairings splashed down in the ocean and were fished out of the water for refurbishment by SpaceX's vessel fleet. Then on Tuesday, SpaceX launched their 16th flock of Starlink satellites into orbit from Cape Canaveral, Florida, bringing the total tally of Starlink sats launched to space to 955. And not only did this mission mark the 100th flight for their Falcon 9 rocket, it also set a record for booster reuse. This was the first time a first stage launched for a seventh time. And since this booster landed successfully on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, it will have an opportunity at number eight sometime in the future. I know SpaceX engineers always get a little nervous when pushing for a reuse record, but if you don't try, you won't succeed. 
which is why this channel found it fitting to adopt the motto, Who Dares Wins. That doesn't make sense. Local photographer Greg Scott captured one of the fairings for this mission on its way into port on Thursday morning after being pulled from the water. The other half arrived on Thursday night. Both appeared to be intact. Starlink engineers held an AMA on Reddit this week under the alias Dishy McFlatface. AMA stands for Ask Me Anything for those of you who are too old and unimpressed by acronyms like me. But Mr. Dishface had some pretty interesting answers to questions that I found worth sharing. First of all, if you still have hard feelings that you weren't invited to the closed beta party, buck up. They are planning to move on to a wider beta in late January. Make sure you're signed up on the Starlink website if you're interested in participating. They confirmed that the user terminal that customers will place on their roof or anywhere with a clear overhead does have self-heating capabilities to deal with a variety of weather conditions. And like Tesla's, they will receive upgrades wirelessly in the months ahead. And the engineers also noted the most exciting challenges they experienced so far working on Starlink, including a truly plug-in and point-at-sky experience. And what I personally find fascinating, programming the world's largest satellite constellation to automatically avoid colliding with other objects in orbit. There's a lot more here we're sharing, but for the sake of time, you can find all my comments concerning the AMA on Patreon or here on YouTube under the memberships tab. Besides Starship, we do have another launch coming up. On December 5th, the 21st resupply mission to the space station will lift off from Florida. This will be the first launch of the new version two Cargo Dragon variant, modeled after the crew capsule. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. <laughs> Well, Thanksgiving is over, and that means Christmas shopping season has officially begun. So I wanted to spend this week's honorable mention segment sharing some space-related gift ideas with you that you can get for your friends, family, or yourself. First up, of course, the SpaceX shop. I get asked all the time where I get some of my SpaceX clothes or accessories that I wear on the show sometimes. Well, right here it is. And by the way, all the sites that I'm listing here are in the description below this video. But the best part about buying from SpaceX directly is that you're supporting the SpaceX mission, both financially and physically by repping their brand. Next up, the LEGO Saturn V. Released in 2017 and then retired a couple years later, it has recently made a rare appearance, so get one while you still can. By far the best LEGO build I've ever had the pleasure of putting together. It, it really was a pleasure. Like the thing is a work of art in both how it looks and how it's constructed. But if you wanna support smaller local businesses with your holiday cash, you can't go wrong with these last three recommendations. Greg Scott, whose professional rocket pictures I've featured in this series many times before, including today, does have a website where you can order prints. I have some physical copies myself. No space themed office or room is complete without one. And guys, trust me, do not make the mistake of forgetting about the woman or women in your life. My sister Tiff, a heart surgeon who also volunteered in a COVID unit this year, has her own online nail business, and space is one of the themes available for order on her site. Apparently these things are all the rage with the females. Yeah, I don't get it either, but you know, the lady in your life does, and that's what really matters. Yeah, as they say, happy wife, no knife in your skull while you're sleeping. And yes, finally, once again, I do have to recommend my mom's online store where she sells space eccentric patches. She gets the profits to support what she does. I get the publicity when you put them on your gear. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but quick shout out to my eccentric members and patrons whose support make these videos possible. Have a normal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.